So hi everyone, uh, thanks for having me here. I'm very happy to be presenting today um, in the session. So I'll be talking about um, how we face consequences together when we make collective decisions and share responsibility with others. So previous research on collective decision making has mainly focused on whether people um, how, whether people improve when they make a collective decision as compared to when they're doing a decision alone. And uh, we recently suggested to shift this focus and take a more comprehensive view um, on collective decisions. Um, first, by asking why do people join this decisions in the first place? And so, of course, we can think that um, in many situations we will join others and do things together to pull our efforts and our intelligence. Um, we also join others because we want to fulfill our normative needs, so just feel to, that we want to be socially included and belong and for fairness issues. But what I'll be talking about um, today is this uh, motive that is sharing responsibility with others. So joining groups because we would like to share responsibility uh, with others for our decisions and their outcomes. And um, the idea here is that collective decisions could have a sort of a protective role um, and help us with the consequences of our decisions because they can allow us to reduce regret, punishment and stress associated with those decisions. And then if things um, go well, we can always take credit um, for uh, the good outcomes. And so I've been doing a lot of um, empirical work in the last years to try to prove this theoretical perspective. And um, I will present some of the results uh, that I've been, I've been doing here. So the first study I'm going to show looked exactly at this um, why question. So why do people make decisions in group and focused on uh, the regret uh, aspect uh, here so because they would maybe want to reduce regret for, the, for their decisions. And so how do we uh, try to experimentally address um, uh, why people join groups? So instead of um, just putting people into groups and telling them to do things together, as is usually done um, in, in collective decision experiments, we give the choice to people to decide whether they want to uh, be alone or in a group for their decisions. So they first make on a trial by trial uh, basis a choice of whether they want to decide alone or as a group. And then in this experiment, the decision that they had to do concerned a lottery choice. So they had to pick between gambles that had different probabilities of winning or losing. And then at the end of the trial, they could see the outcomes um, of uh, their chosen gamble, uh, but they also could see uh, the counterfactual outcome. So they saw both the outcomes um, of their gambles, but also what the gambles that uh, could have been chosen um, by them or their group uh, would have given if, if, if they had ch chosen the, the other gamble. So this allowed us to compute on a trial by trial level, what we call here the current outcome that takes into account both actual and counterfactual outcomes. And the idea here is to see how does this current outcome um, influence the next decisions to decide um, alone or as a group. And so the, the first uh, result that we see here is just showing that there was a typical uh, loose switch win stay effect whereby people, so this is showing the proportion of switching from uh, being um, alone or in a, from alone to a group or from a group to deciding alone. And uh, people tend to switch uh, more often after experiencing a negative uh, outcome as compared to a positive outcome, whether they were alone or in a group. But we did see some differences related um, to people being in group versus deciding individually. So here we're again showing the proportion uh, of switching, but now taking into account the, magn the magnitude of these current outcomes, as I described just before, that we computed by having both the actual and the counterfactual outcomes. And what we can see here, so this is people experiencing these outcomes on their own, and this is as a group, and how this influenced their choice to switch. And we can see that um, actually only if people were alone were they sensitive to the negative outcomes magnitude. So here, the higher the negative outcome, the more they switched um, to being in a group. But this was not the case for positive outcomes alone or for the outcomes um, as a group. 
And the other uh, difference we saw here is, um, and we saw concerning um, individuals and groups, is that so if, if people experienced um, in, uh, outcomes, bad outcomes on their own, um, these outcomes influence their next gamble decision, such as if they experience a negative outcome, the expected value for the next gamble decision was reduced if they were on their own, but not if they were in the group. And so uh, to conclude on this part, so people in groups um, seem to be less sensitive to negative outcome magnitude. They are less effective by outcome balance to guide their next choices, and they anticipate less regret when making their choices. So these were the analyses locked to um, on the time where they chose the gamble that I didn't that, that I didn't show here. So from that, I'm, I'll move to uh, this other aspect, um, that is that people may join groups because it allows us to reduce the blame and uh, punishment um, uh, for the decisions that they make. And the idea here is really if we try to think of sometimes when we um, had to do something that uh, we were worried about, we could have said, it's OK, I did it because others did it too. And maybe I'll, I'll be less blamed because of that. And so we do see um, if we look at the news, for example, that for important uh, decisions, which is more in a political context, people will say things to justify their choices, like we did this because we are not alone. Or if we think about um, how to blame a lot of people who were part of something, we may uh, see things that was blamed for the economic crisis. So things like the answer is everyone and no one. So it just captures this idea that we don't, when we don't really know who to blame, if there's a big group or a group, maybe we just don't know who to blame and maybe people will not be blamed because of that or less. And the idea here was to test this experimentally uh, to try and see if there is any evidence of that. And a very good um, um, games to actually test those hypotheses is to look at experimental economics games. So uh, the first thing we did here was reanalyze uh, public good games where um, people had, uh, so there, there was a group of four people, they could contribute to a common good. Then this uh, good was multiplied by a certain factor and this was redistributed among them. And what was interesting for us um, here in the study is that people had a second stage where they could punish the defectors, so people who contributed contributed uh, less than 10 than the, than the um, mean uh, here. So, and the, I, what we wanted to test was whether there would be a change of punishment use as a function of the number of defectors. So is it the case if too many, so ma many people violate the fairness norms of contributing there, would, that, would it be more okay to do so and would there benefit from less blame? And indeed we find that the frequency of punishment use decreased with the number of detectors the defectors suggesting that there may be a decrease of, that there is a decrease of punishment use if several people violate the norms now one thing we could wonder is what happens now if we are in the group and we want to um, do a cooperative act will we be acting in ways that uh, show that we care maybe we think that we may get less blame and we also conducted um ultimatum game so where here there is a proposer um, which can offer a certain amount of money from what they already have um, and um, in this game again the receiver to whom we're proposing can accept or reject the offer and if they reject the offer it's a form of a social punishment because then nobody gets anything so if we give very uh, low offers then our offer we may be punished for them and the novelty of the paradigm here is that we made people also do this proposal role as a group in a group in a group of three um, and we did find that um, people in groups gave lower offer um, as compared to when they were alone suggesting that uh, participants may be expecting less blame and punishment when they are in, in a group structure. So um, just to summarize on these two studies, people in groups seem to be less sensitive to negative outcomes um, and regret and less sensitive to um, uh, punishment and may benefit from a decreased uh, blame. Now, um, from that, we may ask, um, we do see that people in groups seem to process um, outcomes um, differently than when they're alone, but do we have any neural um, evidence for that? And can we find any differential neural processing of these outcomes in the brain? Um, and actually, the main motivation of, of doing uh, the um, MEG study that I'm going to present next was to test that there is a, that the neural uh, correlates underlying shared responsibility in collective decisions will be common to those underlying uh, the sense of agency. So, how much people feel in control for their action, and we've heard about uh, the sense of agency in the in the last two talks. 
And so um, the motivation came from um, previous studies that show that um, in social contexts, uh, responsibility where responsibility is reduced there is a decreased um, sense of agency um, so whether people are in the presence of another agent when people perform actions with others and um, when people are being coerced to harm others so this is exactly the study that uh, Patrick showed and in these uh, previous studies um, they have focused on how um, the outcome is processed in these different uh, based on responsibility and what they have shown um, for example is that a uh, component so the feedback related negativity a component that appears at between 200 and 300 milliseconds after outcome onset um, is reduced in those um, um, responsibility contexts where responsibility is reduced as compared to when people are acting on um, the decision on their own acting or making a decision on their own and um, so in the current study, we wanted to have uh, those different responsibility levels in one design and had the hypothesis that there will be a linear decrease of outcome processing with responsibility. And uh, specifically, this will be the case in brain regions that are associated with the brain, uh, with the sense of agency, um, including parietal and motor regions. But we also wanted to go a step further from what has been done um, before related to the outcome and also look at what happens when people are thinking about the outcomes but didn't take, receive the outcomes yet. So at the time of the decision, based on these different responsibility contexts. And the prediction here was that motor preparation for the decision will decrease in those social contexts where responsibility is reduced. So um, we had an experimental design uh, where um, we had a parametric design where people made decisions um, either on their own or with somebody else or um, in a group of five or somebody else made the decision for them. And uh, the decision that they had to do concerned gambles. So these were uh, images of real life um, gambles, just hand drawn, as you can see here. And these, um, this decision could lead either to a positive or a negative outcome. And people were asked to judge how responsible they felt um, either before they see the outcome or after they see the outcome. So we did see that people indeed rated feeling most responsible when they were um, on their own, then with somebody else, then in a group, then when somebody else made the decision for them. And when we look at, um, we focus on our first hypothesis, locked to the outcome, um, and focus on the time window of 200 to 300 milliseconds after outcome onset, and do trial by trial regressions of the MEG signal, against those responsibility contexts, we find that there are some electrodes in which we did find the significant relation between MEG signals and responsibility contexts. So just to show you how it looks on these electrodes, if we plot the parameter estimate of res this regression through time, we see that it, it peaks here just after 200 milliseconds. And uh, just to show also how the on the same electrodes, um, the grand average re related fields look like when we sh uh, show for uh, these grand average related fields for each of the um, different responsibility contexts. So we do see that it varies linearly. Um, like here. And when we do these trial by trial regressions, now at the source level, we find regions including post central uh, and pre central cortex and superior and inferior parietal lobe. So we do find that outcome processing is parametrically reduced with responsibility in brain regions that have been associated with the sense of agency. Now, what happens when we look at um, the time where people were making the decision uh, before the outcome. So here we focused on lateralized motor preparation for response and again did um, trial by trial um, regressions against those responsibility contexts but now for, of this motor preparation uh, response and um, we find that at 500 milliseconds after the gamble onset people uh, showed higher motor preparation for the decision when they were um, doing the decision on their own compared to in the social context so suggesting that there is a reduced motor intention and control when others are involved in the decision 
Now, behaviorally, I've only shown you to now how uh, the responsibility reduced based on the different contexts, but you may be wondering what happens based on whether they receive the positive or a negative outcome. And the first thing we show that we, we see that is that there is a typical self-serving bias where people feel more responsible for positive um, as compared to negative outcomes. So this is just a subtraction between uh, ratings after positive and negative outcomes. And this was actually the case similarly for all the contexts where people were active. So um, whether they were alone or the social context and with no difference there, ju just wasn't present when somebody else made the decision for them. But now our design allowed us to also look at what happens if we compare um, ratings after the outcome and bef to before the outcome. And when we do this subtraction here, we see that the credit that is claimed for a positive outcome was actually increased in the social context as compared to when people were making the decision alone. And now if we try and localize this effect in the brain, we find that this responsibility boost in social decisions um, was associated with brain regions that are usually related to social and reward processing, including orbitofrontal cortex, temporal pole, and superior temporal sulcus. So um, I hope to have demonstrated that we did show that the neural mechanisms underlying a shared responsibility in collective decisions are um, common to those underlying the sense of agency. And here we showed that people seem to take credit um, when they are um, in groups. And now to get all together with the results that I've shown and some that I didn't show here, um, I've shown that, uh, that there is a flexibility benefit of making decisions in group because people can claim credit for positive outcomes, but um, importantly, this uh, it can reduce the negative emotions related to decision consequences. So thank you for your attention um, to my collaborators on these studies and to my funders. Great, thank Great. you very much, uh, Mawa. That's uh, really excellent. I can't resist um, coming in immediately with one, one question. Um, so... Uh, um, did, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I was just trying to yeah. see you. <laughs> did, um, did people make two judgments of responsibility on the same trial about the same event? Because there's then a worry that they're just repeating themselves or that the first judgment is the same. No, yeah, no, they didn't. It was uh, in different trials. Sorry, I forgot to mention, to mention that. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to read out uh, one question from Ayan. Uh, which one do you think has less sense of responsibility when one person decides for us or when a group of people decide for us. So I guess the idea here is that, for example, you can imagine a president who decides something which has impacts on loads of other people. And in another situation, you can imagine a set of representatives like the Senate or who makes a decision which has implications for loads of other people. So is it, does there need to be a single agent, I suppose? Okay, do we find differences if it's a group of people deciding for us or if it's just somebody else? I'm, I'm not sure that's an interesting question. I've never tested it. Maybe, I mean, either it's going to be similar. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, yeah, what I would predict for that. So next experiment, perhaps. But <laughs> yeah. 